night. Thou that looks like funeral heralds fees torn down betimes in the morning. Thou hangs fitly to grace those sins that have no grace at all. Now tis full sea a bed over the world. There's juggling of all sides. Some that were made e'en at sunset, and now perhaps i the Tolbuck. This woman in immodest, thin apparel lets in her friend by water. Here a dame, cunning, nails leather hinges to a door to avoid proclamation. Now cuckolds are a coining. A pace, a pace, a pace, a pace. If anything be damned, it'll be twelve o'clock at night. That twelve will never scape. It is the Judas of the hours, wherein honest salvation is betrayed to sin. Hush, look, through sainted glass may see her where she sits, in widow's weeds so fresh the starch does scratch her skin. Skin across her cheeks, as slack as that upon the corpse the casket keeps. She keeps vigil in flickering dark and fusty smell, while friends and family come and go. Go, now, or by Saint Paul I will strike thee to my foot, and spurn upon thee beggars for thy boldness. What? Do you tremble? Are you all afraid? Alas, I blame you not, for you are mortal, and mortal eyes cannot endure the devil. Avaunt, thou dreadful minister of hell. <laughs> Sweet saint, for charity, be not so cursed. Foul devil, for God's sake hence, and trouble us not, for thou hast made the happy earth thy hell. Lady, you know no rules of charity, which renders good for bad, blessings for curses. Villain, thou know'st no law of God nor man, no beast so fierce but know some touch of pity. But I know none, and therefore am no beast. Oh, wonderful, when devils tell the truth. More wonderful when angels are so angry. Vouchsafe divine perfection of a woman of these supposed evils, to give me leave by circumstance, but to acquit myself. Vouchsafe diffused infection of a man for these known evils, but to give me leave by circumstance, to curse thy cursed self. Fairer than tongue can name thee, let me have some patient leisure to excuse myself. Fouler than heart can think thee, thou canst make no excuse current, but to hang thyself. Say that I slew him not. Why then he is not dead? But dead he is, and devilish slave by thee. I did not kill your husband. Why, then he is alive. Nay, he is dead, and slain by Edward's hand. In thy foul throat thou liest. Queen Margaret saw thy murderous falchion smoking in his blood. Didst thou not kill this king? I grant ye. Toss grant me, hedgehog? Then God grant me too. Thou mayst be damned for that wicked deed. Oh, he was gentle, mild and virtuous. The fitter for the king of heaven that hath him. He is in heaven, where thou shalt never come. Let him thank me that hope to send him thither, for he was fitter for that place than earth. And thou unfit for any place but hell. Yes. One place else, if you will hear me name it. Some dungeon. Your bedchamber. <laughs> Ill respite the chamber where thou liest. So will it, madam, till I lie with you. I hope so. I know so. But, gentle Lady Anne, to leave this keen encounter of our wits is not the cause of the deaths of these Plantagenets, Henry and Edward, as blameful as the executioner. Thou art the cause and most accursed effect. Your beauty was the cause of that effect. Your beauty which did haunt me in my sleep, to undertake the death of all the world, so I might live one hour 
in your sweet bosom. If, if I thought that, I tell thee, homicide, these nails should rend that beauty from my cheeks. These eyes could never endure sweet beauty's wreck. You should not blemish it if I stood by. As all the world is cheered by the sun, so I by that. It is my day, my life. Black night o'ershade thy day, and death thy life. Curse not thyself, fair creature, thou art both. I would I were, to be revenged on thee. It is a quarrel most unnatural, to be revenged on him that loveth you. It is a quarrel just and reasonable, to be revenged on him that slew my husband. He that bereft thee, lady, of thy husband, did it to help thee to a better husband. His better doth not breathe upon the earth. He lives that loves thee better than he could. Name him. Plantagenet. Why, that was he. The self-same name, but one of better nature. Where is he? Here. <coughs> Why dost thou spit at me? Would it were mortal poison for thy sake? Never came poison from so sweet a place. Never hung poison on a fouler toad. Out of my sight, thou dost infect my eyes. Thine eyes, sweet lady, have infected mine. Would they were basilisks to strike thee dead. Teach not thy lips such scorn, for they were made for kissing, lady, not for such contempt. If thy revengeful heart cannot forgive, Look, here, I lend thee this sharp-pointed blade, which, if thou please to hide in this true bosom, and let the soul forth that adoreth thee, I lay it naked to the deadly stroke, and humbly beg the death upon my knee. Nay, do not pause, for I did kill King Henry, but twas thy beauty that provoked me. Nay, now dispatch, twas thy that stabbed young Edward, but twas thy heavenly face that set me on. Take up the blade again, or take up me. Arise, dissembler. Though I wish thy death, I will not be the executioner. Then bid me kill myself, and I will do it. I have already. Tush, <laughs> that was in thy rage. Speak it again, and even with the word, that hand, which for thy love did kill thy love, shall for thy love kill a far truer love. To both their deaths, thou shalt be accessory. I would I knew thy heart. Tis figured in my tongue. I fear me both are false. Then never man was true. Well, well, put up your knife. Say then, my peace is made. That shall you know hereafter. But shall I live in hope? All men, I hope, live so. Vouchsafe to wear this ring. But to, to take is not to give. Look how this ring encompasseth finger. Even so thy breasts encloseth my poor heart. Wear both of them, for both of them are thine. And if thy poor devoted suppliant may but beg one favour to thy gracious hand, thou dost confirm his happiness for ever. What is it? Bid me farewell. Tis more than you deserve. But since you teach me how to flatter you, imagine I... <sighs> Farewell. <laughs> Was ever woman in this humour woo? Was ever woman in this humour won? He'll have her, but he will not keep her long. But here is one who has his love preserved. With what reverence her face he doth unveil and gently gently lifts the yellowed bone and gazes into holes where once were eyes. Thou sallow picture of my poisoned love, my study's ornament, thou shell of death. Once the bright face of my betrothed lady, when life and beauty naturally filled out these ragged imperfections. 
when two heaven-pointed diamonds were set in those unsightly rings. Then t'was a face so far beyond the artificial shine of any woman's bought complexion that the uprightest man, if such there be, that sinned but seven times a day, broke custom and made up eight with looking after her. But, O oh, accursed palace, thee, when thou wert apparelled in thy flesh, the old duke poisoned, because thy pure apart would not consent until his palsy lust. Beware an old man, hot and vicious. Age is in gold, in lust is covetous. Vengeance, thou murders, quit rent. O oh, keep thy day, hour, minute, I beseech, for those thou hast determined. <laughs> Whoever knew murder unpaid. Faith, give revenge her due. She has kept touch hitherto. Be merry, merry, advance thee. O oh, thou terror to fat folks, to have their costly three-piled flesh worn off as bare as this. He places her once more inside her bag. For nine years now the worm has wriggled in his blood. Nine years in exile. And now, nine nights in shadows of this tainted city. Watching. Waiting. Across the street gold light spills out like sauce and fat folk push the dainties round their plates. Sleek and dark. Ostentatiously discreet and entitled, a car stops. Traffic waits while silk and worsted leisurely straighten. Duke, royal lecher, go grey-haired adultery, and thou his son, as empire steeped as he, and thou his bastard, true begot in evil, and thou his duchess, that will do of the devil. Four excellent characters enter stage right. He watches them seated, imperious in the opulence, then slips through the doors like a knife between the ribs. Drink. <laughs> Why not? The town has hostelries to tickle every taste. The lamb and flag, the bear and billet, the slug and lettuce. I know, the Shakespeare. A tavern of Babel, cheek by jowl and elbow to ass, the roisterers, revellers, miscreants and malcontents, wheeler dealers, whores and gallants, philosophers and boards expound and confide amongst the margaritas. Listen, listen, I've got one for you. There was a lady in France that, having had the smallpox, flayed the skin of her face to make it more level. And whereas before she looked like a nutmeg grater, after she resembled an abortive hedgehog. Thou nature, art my goddess. To thy law my services are bound. Wherefore should I stand in the plague of Costa? and permit the curiosity of nations to deprive me. For that I am some 12 or 14 moonshine's lack of a brother? Why bastard? Wherefore base? When my dimensions are as well compact, my mind as generous and my shape as true as honest madam's issue. Scotch, no ice please. Have you finished with those glasses? Observe my meditation now. What thing is in this outward form of man to be beloved? We account it ominous if nature do produce a colt or lamb, a fawn or goat in any limb resembling a man and fly from it as a prodigy. Man stands amazed to see his deformity in any other creature but himself. But in our own flesh, Though we bear diseases which have their true names only taken from beasts, as the most ulcerous wolf and swinish measle, though we are eaten up of lice and worms, and though continually we bear about us a rotten and dead body, we delight to hide it in rich tissue. All our fear, nay, all our terror, is lest our physician shall put us in the ground to be made sweet. Is anybody waiting? Why brand they us with base, with baseness, bastardy, base, base? 
who, in the lusty stealth of nature, take more composition and fierce quality than doth. Within a dull, stale, tired bed, go to the creating a whole tribe of fops, got to in a sleep and wake. Come, woo me, woo me, for I am in a holiday humour and like enough to consent. That's bustling. She'll bite up his balls and spit Approach. Come. Come closer. I would sooner eat a dead pigeon taken from the soles of the feet of one sick of the plague than kiss one of you fasting. Never fall. Well then, Brigitte Edgar, I must have your land. Our father's love is to the bastard Edmund, as to the legitimate. Fine word. Legitimate. Well, my legitimate, if this letter speed and my invention thrive, Edmund the base shall top the legitimate. I grow, I prosper. Now, gods, stand up for bastards. Oi, oi, Bossola, thy tongue out venoms all the worms of Nile. More of your conversation would infect my brain. Out you go. Friends, I have seen more life in a eunuch's codpiece than this hype in a hostelry. Come to Broad Street, there to make merry till the moon doth yawn. This city is built of bricks and bones, its civil cogs all oiled in blood. Ghosts throng every corner, their dismal voices rustle round the bins behind the bars. That whisper vapour drifting from a drain must watch his widow wooed by him who stole his life. But sometimes they are heard. What does Hamlet see in the darkened window of yon shut down shop? Mark me. I will. My hour is almost come. When I to sulphurous and tormenting flames must render up myself. Alas, poor ghost. Pity me not. But lend thy serious hearing to what I shall unfold. Speak. I'm bound to hear. So unfold to revenge. When thou shalt hear, sleeping within my orchard, my custom always of the afternoon, upon my secure hour thy uncle stole, with juice of cursed habona in a vial, and in the porches of my ear did pour the leprous distillment, whose effect holds such enmity with the blood of man, that swift as quick silver it courses through the natural gates and alleys of the body. Thus I was. Sleeping by a brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched. Horrible, horrible, most horrible. If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed, Denmark, be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But, howsoever thou pursue this act, tend not thy mind. Nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother art. Leave her to heaven. And to those fawn that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. Hamlet! Friend! How now? How was it with you that you do bend your eye on vacancy? <laughs> Where on do you look? On him! On him! Look how pale he glares! His form and cause conjoined, preaching to stones would make them capable. Do not look upon me. And to whom do you speak this? Do you see nothing there? Nothing at all. Yet all that is, I see. Nor did you nothing here? No, nothing but ourselves. Why look you there? Look how it steals away. My father in his habit as he lived. 
Look where he goes even now out at the portal. Ah. Uh, see, this is the very coinage of your brain. This bodiless creation, ecstasy, is very cunning in. Ecstasy? No. Ah. Uh, perhaps this what you need, my friend. I may have a table tea. Forget it. Hamlet. Mad as a fiddler's bitch. Outside the palace club, wenches in a line. Long-legged, skittish as cops. <laughs> the men eye them with the mind to ride them bareback. No jeans. Nay, but who is it? This rosebud shall not open. Nay, I prithee now with most petitioner vehemence. Tell me who it is. Nineteen. You think me blind or adopted? Hence in return when three more summers are spent their heat on thee. Oh wonderful, wonderful, and most wonderful, wonderful, and yet again, wonderful, and after that, out of all hoping. I prithee, tell me who is it quickly, and speak apace. I would thou could stammer, that thou mightst pour this concealed man out of thy mouth, as wine comes out of a narrow mouth bottle. Either too much at once, or none at all. I prithee, take the cork out of thy mouth, that I may drink thy tidings. So you may put a man in your belly. <laughs> Celia! Is he of God's making? What manner of man? Is his head worth a hat? Or his chin worth a beard? Nay, he hath but a little beard. Why, God will send more, if the man be thankful. Let me stay the growth of his beard. If thou delay me not the knowledge of his chin. It is young Orlando, the tripped up the restless heels and your heart, both in an instant. Nay, but the devil take mocking. If faith cause, tis he. Orlando? Orlando. Orlando! Orlando! Oh, sweet, delectable, rare, happy, ravishing! Why? What's the matter? Brother, why are you dressed like a pimp? Oh, tis able to make a man spring up and knock his forehead against yon silver ceiling. Privy, tell me! <laughs> why may I not partake with you? You vowed once to give me a share to every tragic thought. By the mass, I think I did too. Then I'll divide it to thee. A moment, brother. No, no, no. Not with her in that state. Have avoid her guts in the gutter, then get her home. By the mass indeed. So. The old duke, thinking my outward shape and inward heart are cut of one piece, hires me by price to greet him with a lady in some fit place veiled from the eyes of the court, in some darkened, blushless angle, to which I easily consented, and did wish his impudent grace to meet her here. Aye, but where's that lady now? Oh, at that word, I'm lost again. You cannot find me yet. I'm in a throng of happy apprehensions. He's suited for a lady. I have took care for a delicious lip, a sparkling eye. You shall be witness, sister. Be ready, stand with your hat off. Brother, wait. What? In those shoes. Is this face the face of one who loves a jest? Depart. Trough. I wonder what lady it should be. <laughs> Not this distracted one we follow from spectral father to her uncle's wife. Her mother. Now, mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. Why, how now, Hamlet? What's the matter now? Have you forgot me? No, by the rude, not so. You are the queen, your husband's brother's wife, and, would it were not so, 
You are my mother. Nay, then I'll set those to you that can speak. Come, come and sit you down. You shall not budge. You go not till I set up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. What wilt thou do? Thou wilt not murder me. Look here upon this picture. And on this, the counterfeit presentment of two brothers. See what a grace was seated on this brow. Hyperion curls the front of Jove himself. An eye like Mars to threaten and command. A station like the herald Mercury, new lightened on a heaven-kissing hill. A combination and form indeed, where every god did seem to set his seal to give the world assurance of a man. This was your husband. Look you now what follows. Here is your husband, like a mildewed ear blasting his wholesome brother. Have you eyes? Could you on this fair mountain leave to feed and batten on this moor? <laughs> Have you eyes you cannot call it love? For at your age the heyday in the blood is tame. It's humble and waits upon the judgment. And what judgment would step from this to this? Oh Hamlet, speak no more. Thou turks mine eyes into my very soul. And there I see such black and grained spots as will not leave their tinct. Nay, but to live in the rank sweat of an ensemed bed, stewed in corruption, honeying and making love over the nasty sty. Oh, speak to me no more. These words like daggers enter in mine ears. No more, sweet Hamlet. A murtherer and a villain, a slave that is not twentieth part the type of your precedent lord. No more. O oh, Hamlet, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Then throw away the worser part of it, and live the purer with the other half. Good night. But go not to my uncle's bed, refrain tonight, and that shall lend a kind of easiness to the next abstinence, the next more easy. For use almost can change the stamp of nature. And when you are desirous to be blessed, I'll bless him beg of you. No jeans, no trainers, it's the rules. Try snobs. I observe our Duchess is sick of days. She pukes, her stomach seethes, the fins of her eyelids look most teeming blue. She wines his cheek and waxes fatted flank, and contrary to our Italian fashion, wears a loose bodied gown. There's somewhat in it. I have a trick, my chance discover it. A pretty one. I have bought some apricots, the first our spring yields. What? You require proof of my age? I know thee, Bossola. Handbag. I have no need of knives. My tongue hath edge enough. Aye. And you're careless enough with it to cut your own throat. Would you confiscate my tongue? Someone should. Go on in. Vindici. A quarter of the hour. Where? In a car beneath a railway arch, vengeance waits. Beside him, his companion is silent, swathed and hooded. Brother? Madam, his grace will not be absent long. Secret? Never doubt us, madam, till we wear three velvet gowns to your ladyship. No, few ladies respect that. Disgrace? A poor thin shell, tis the best grace, you'll have to do it well. I'll save your hand at labour, I'll unmask you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this one is written, but not for redemption. Have I not fitted the old surfer to a quaint piece of beauty? Age and bare bone are ever allied in action. Here's an eye able to tempt a great man to serve God. 
Here's a cheek, keeps her colour. Let the wind go whistle. Spouse rain, <laughs> we fear thee not. Be hot or cold, all's one with us. And are they not absurd, whose fortunes are upon their faces set, that fear no other god but wind and wet? Brother, you spoke that right. Is this the form that live and shone so bright? The very same. Does the silkworm expend her yellow labours for thee? For thee does she undo herself? Our lordships sold to maintain ladyships for the poor benefit of a bewitching minute. Surely we're all mad people, and they whom who think are, are not. We mistake those. It's we are mad in sense, but they in clothes. From out the bag a bottle he brings, a brush that ladies use for lips. This skull, whose mistress the duke poisoned, with this drug, the mortal curse of the earth shall be revenged in like strain and kiss his lips to death. As much as the dumb thing can, he shall feel. What fails in poison will supply in steel. Brother, I do applaud thy constant vengeance, the quaintness of thy malice above thought. So, tis laid on. Now come and welcome, Duke. Tis vain when beauty flows, but when it fleets, this will become graves better than the streets. You have my voice in that. Hark! The Duke's come! So, so now nine years' vengeance crowd into a minute. Wait with the bony lady. Bony lady. <laughs> Shut up. If we be missed by the Duchess or any other nobles, give out we're privately rid forth. Privately rid forth? He strives to make sure work of it. Your good grace. Yes, yep, yeah. see you later. <gasps> Hast brought her. What lady is? Faith, my lord, a country lady, a little bashful at first, as most of them are, but after the first kiss, my lord, the worst is past with them. Your grace knows now what you have to do. She has somewhat a grave look with her, but... I love that best. Conduct her. In gravest looks, the greatest faults seem less. Give me that sin that's robed in holiness. Back with the torch. Sister, raise the perfumes. How sweet can a duke breathe? Age has no fault. Pleasure should meet in a perfumed mist. Lady, sweetly encountered, I came from court. I must be bold with you. He kisses the skull. Oh! <laughs> What's this? Oh! Royal villain, white devil. Oh! Sister, place the torch here that his affrighted eyeballs may start into those hollows. Duke does not know yon dreadful vizard. View it well. Tis the skull of Gloriana, whom thou poisoned last. Oh, Taz poisoned me. Did not know that till now. What are you two? Villains, all three. The very ragged bone has been sufficiently revenged. Oh! Hippolyto, call treason! Yes, my good lord. Treason! Treason! Then I'm betrayed. Treason! Alas, poor lent in the hands of knaves. A slavish duke is better than his slaves. My, my teeth are, are eaten out. Has there any left? I think, but few. Then those that did eat are eaten. Oh! My, my tongue! Your tongue? To teach you to kiss closer, not like a slobbering Dutchman. You have eyes still. Look, monster, what lady thou hast made me, my once betrothed wife. Is it thou, villain? Tis I, tis Mindici, tis I. Oh. Nay, faith, we'll have you hushed now with thy dagger. I cannot brook. The brook is turned to blood. Dawn, thou that looks with bleary open eye upon the scene of scarce remembered sins, lights upon the reminders that remain. Hear your glare glances on a bottle half full, leftover meats congeal in the gutter. In the doorway of a department store, 
A flimsy undergarment lies abandoned. And abandoned in the cut, the severed duke turns and turns. And sightless Gloriana rests at last, her bony brow upon the muddy bed.